over 5,000 years ago. Ancient Mesopotamians cooked with some of the first frying pans. While early pans were often made of copper, brass, or bronze, it would be iron that would rule the frying world by the 19th century. Today, the small town of South Pittsburgh, Tennessee, is home to the only foundry in the United States still making the cast iron cookware we've depended on for over 200 years. It was really America's original cookware, back before aluminum and stainless steel, which dominate the uh, cookware market today. Family owned and operated since 1896, the Lodge Manufacturing Company pours, molds, and packages over a hundred varieties of cast iron cookware, including Dutch ovens, woks, and of course, frying pans. start here with three primary ingredients. Pig iron, recycled cast iron cookware, and stamped steel. The foundry melts them all together to achieve a proper cast iron chemistry. A container transfers this blend to the molding area. Here, a machine presses river sand into two-sided molds, which are filled with the molten cast iron to form the ideal pan. The pans will cool and shake off sand to be recycled. The cookware goes through several buffing and cleaning processes, including a rock polish to remove more sand and rough edges. For centuries, when someone bought a new cast iron pan, it looked like this. It wasn't seasoned. Seasoning creates a non-stick effect on cast iron cookware. Recently, Lodge began pre-seasoning all cookware for their customers. They begin by spraying soy-based vegetable oil across the entire piece. This oil coats the pan's surface. An industrial oven heats the oil and pan to over 400 degrees Fahrenheit for roughly 20 minutes, causing all the elements of the oil to burn off, except for the carbon. These carbon deposits seal the surface, including any microscopic pores, keeping food from sticking to the pan. It's the carbon deposit, which is really your seasoning, and this old skillet that's 60 years old uh, is as smooth as a baby's bottom. With proper care, it could easily last for centuries. Regularly cooking with cast iron reseasons the surface. But there's another benefit. It's been substantiated that cast iron parts die, carry iron in the food, which is absorbed by the body, so it's healthy to cook in. Having a durable non-stick surface that can maintain an even heat of 325 degrees Fahrenheit is especially helpful when pan frying southern fried chicken. This is the difference between southern frying and sauteing. In sauteing, you move the food around. In southern frying or pan frying, you leave it alone. You're going to let this pan do what this pan is meant to do, which is form the crust on the chicken. And this is also the difference between deep frying. In deep frying, the food is completely immersed. One of the secrets to having really good southern fried chicken is that it's crispy. And if you drain it on paper towels, you're increasing sogginess. Take your wire baking rack and put your fried chicken on that, then that keeps it crispy. The ultimate in southern fried chicken. Crunchy on the outside, completely done and moist on the inside, and served piping hot. Since the 1930s, the Sanders Cafe in Corbin, Kentucky has fried up what Colonel Harlan Sanders also considered the perfect fried.